guys welcome back to another episode of going medieval so today we're going to be working on that wall a little bit more they say they can't build it but they can i know they can there's tons of wood that they have over here so they just they just don't know that they can that's all um eventually what i want to end up doing is getting this spot opened up that way we don't need to get rid of north's house and we might even be able to put something else here uh I'm not sure what else we have to get unlocked, but we did get furniture last episode, so we have some better beds. These ones take up a little bit more space, a two by uh, three area, but they're a lot better um, for decoration and stuff. There's a couple variants of it as well. There's cloth and uh, linen, or hold on, what? Wool cloth, and there is linen cloth, so there's a couple different styles for those ones. We got finally chests, so basically things that we can store a um, whole bunch of stuff in. Uh, warfare items, peel, and uh, coins by the look of it as well. So there's those. And then there was a few other things like the um, camp, candelabra? candelabra? I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but it's basically like candle candles that we can basically place around they give off less of a heat source so good for like cold storage for some lighting and stuff like that as well and i think that was pretty much all the furniture that we got from that one um i don't think there was any workstations or anything like that we got yeah so basically those are the things that we were able to unlock um the the candle ones obviously require wax so wax so if we want to unlock that then we're going to have to at least not be dependent on other countries to do that with. So we probably want to make sure that we get um, a place set up for producing wax. We can do it in somewhere uh, that's maybe fenced off, just in case there is a bear that comes in because they're attracted to it as well. So uh, it also produces honey, which is a food source. So, But it only is able to go through the spring summer and fall seasons before they go into hibernation which is actually really realistic so uh, we'll need to find a spot for that we'll probably want to fence around it uh, maybe with a gate or something like that just so that they are protected and one thing about bee things is I'm trying to find the research tab um 15 and 10. So they are uh, sensitive to weather conditions. So you'll need like an awning or something over them. Actually, that looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed how that turned out.
story. So I ended up uh, getting Sylvester stuck by accident. Um, I was working on getting this wall done and uh, I guess he barricaded himself in by accident. Sometimes that happens based on the rotation. They don't really have the idea that that can happen for them, but it, it just is. I mean, I don't expect them to, you know, know that they're going to be able to get kind of fenced in like that, but it would be nice if they didn't like have that happen too often. But I, I think that's just based on how they build things. Like they tend to build it this direction and that direction. So I don't even know if that's like Northeast or whatever, but there's not really any directional stuff that you can find in this game. So I just know that for this map, they build on this side and that side. So you have to kind of pre-plan where everything is going to be built and stuff. So, but uh, yeah, so we got that part set up. We're going to put uh, extra storage in here for other things. So this will be eventually something that we can actually make something out of. So uh, we should probably put some supports down, get some stuff in now that we got that part all set up. Uh, I just noticed that this is a little bit off for the... Um, Oh, hold on a second, because, uh, let's see here. It's not that it's off, it's that the size isn't correct for this corner piece. It should be more like that. Uh, because it's a corner, so it's going to be a little bit shaped a little bit differently. Alright, so that's fine. And then we'll go ahead and place that down, and then we can put our supports like that. And eventually when they get this part built, then we'll be able to put a floor in there as well. And we can even go ahead and start telling them to build this part. That, that should give us a lot of room for um, our battling and stuff like that. I think that'll be good for what we need, right? And then... They'll have a two-door system, so if they breach the first door, they'll, there will be a second door that they can barricade and stuff. Well, we'll probably barricade the second one regardless. Uh, that way, when they get through the first one, uh, they'll just kind of, their AI just kind of changes. I, I've done that before, a two-door solution like that, and it seems to work just fine. So, um, as far as this, the path isn't really centered. I can't really fix that now because, I mean... It's too late. We already built the market. So and the market does look really good. I'm really impressed with how it turned out. Um, the seats are a little...
Alrighty then. So I basically traded with these guys for some um, coins. So they didn't have a whole lot that um, we needed. So I ended up just um, buying out their coins because we can always use the coins, right? Uh, it's a currency that will always be able to be traded and stuff. So it's pretty valuable resource, but... Uh, I'm not sure how many coins we have now uh, at the moment. Coins, we have 695. So that's a pretty fair amount of coins, actually. Uh, we should be able to purchase medium to medium range items and stuff like that. We still need a stockpile for our limestone and bricks. I noticed that we just have like a whole bunch of um, materials laying around that we're not utilizing and stuff like that. So we should probably figure out what we need to do that. I'm not sure about like the house or the roofs. Um, I'm pretty happy with the, the design for these, but um, I don't think there's any significant buildings left to actually work on for roofs. I mean, we could try to upgrade some of these uh, business ones, but um, that might just be too much for the roof style. I don't know. I'm trying to space them out in just a way that will kind of complement the town and stuff like that. So maybe these ones out here, these three back here might be okay to do, but I don't want to do the this one because that would require this building, which is also a house, to be updated. So that I probably won't end up doing. And yeah, I'm just trying to trying to plan that out, right? You, know, you don't want it to look too the similar and stuff like that. The key is difference because not every house is going to be built the same way. I mean, it's just unpractical. Even modern cities don't have um, very similar um, styles and stuff like that, unless they're actually, there's building codes to design them that way. But in most cities and stuff like that, the house will be different from the next one or the neighboring one and stuff like that. So it's, it's, it's just makes sense to have it as different as possible. Um, we could even go with thatch or other ones like we have over here. These kind of make sense for the barns and stuff. You're not going to spend a lot of money on barn material for roofing and stuff like that. That just makes sense not to like ex have expensive material for roofs for a barn. But I don't know. It just makes sense to me at least. Uh, we are cooking up. What are we cooking? We are cooking some iron. So they finally must have gotten to mining out the iron by the looks of it. So they've probably been working on that, which is good. Uh, we got some clay that we still need to be mined. It looks like they started that recently, maybe. And there's not too much more to mine out over on this side. <laughs>
Anyhow, uh, we got quite a bit of stuff done today. We got a good chunk of the wall built, and they're building the Marlins right now. So this will allow them to get a little bit more protection, and we'll end up putting... Um, well, the best thing that I've found so far is signs, no, the ground signs. That gives an additional 20% protection. So if we were to do maybe like signs along the side here, it only costs like four wood, but... Uh, it might give us a little bit more protection than what we already have. Uh, I, I have no, doubled up the Marlins in the past, and because it's 55%, I think the game gets a little bit laggy uh, because the it goes up to over 100%. Uh, percent. So we'll probably not use another Marlin, or I would have, but we might be able to use some signs and see how that turns out. But I do think it's linked up to the AI for the um enemies shooting at us so if it's over 100 percent, it might mess with their ai a little bit um i haven't reported it because i wasn't entirely sure what was going on but uh, that was a really long time ago when i first started playing the game i don't even know if that's like a thing anymore so uh, we could always try that but it would be expensive and we would remove all our uh floor but signs on the other hand give a bonus of 20 percent uh, which is still under the uh, cap for 100%. And it should allow us to get protection. So if we put like signs along here, we might be able to be protected a little bit more than if we were just to have the Marlin at 55%. And just an idea. Um, it might give some extra decoration. I don't know. We'll see what we can come up with and um, experiment with. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.